thank you very much for actually affording me this opportunity to actually uh, explain what we are doing. Uh, my name is Anderson Simfukwe. Um, I'm the executive director for Alzheimer's disease and related dementias in Zambia. I look at the nexus between dementia and witchcraft in the African context. There is this relationship that is between witchcraft and dementia. Uh, many people around here are accused of practicing witchcraft. And the people at the center of all these are the older persons. We are looking at dementia with an intersection of older persons. Then on the other hand, we are looking at witchcraft. People are being accused of practicing witchcraft. And mostly they are the, those people who are uh, advancing in age, people aged between 70 and 85. These are the most people who are targeted in our own context. So we are looking at how best can we sensitize the communities, to sensitize the community in the sense that we, the community actually doesn't uh, uh, accuse these people as witches or wizards, rather they should understand them as having uh, been going through a certain condition. Most of the times, the, the witch finders, when they come in the community, they target those rich uh, older persons, and in the process, as they try to find out what is going on, they would fail to actually understand what these witch finders are, are actually looking for. For example, they would be asked, um, are you the one who killed this person or who bewitched this person? That's because someone is going through a process of maybe a condition called dementia or any of the forms of dementia. This person can say, yes, it's me. But in the actual fact, that person is not the person actually behind all those uh, misfortunes that are befalling the communities. So it is against this background that Adiz goes around the communities to actually look at that. Also, we look at the, when people, these people are actually found to want in their secluded, put elsewhere in the community, in the outskirts of the town, in the, um, in the rural, remote parts of the town, where housing for those people is in question. So we're also looking at this uh, as, as Addis want to create a state of the art, smart gener generational household that cares so that it might it should incorporate these people who are actually in the outskirts. By so doing, we are actually reuniting the families, what we call family unification and coexistence. It's in that, uh, with, with that, most of the families we're now bring together, we are bringing them back into uniting them to their families. Something that has actually worked to work and we are working with the government so that we can actually formulate a policy or a plan called the National Plan on Dementia, NDP. So this plan will actually look, will actually incorporate all these issues because Zambia has a, a, an act, a chapter 90 of the Zambian laws. It talks about how we can incriminate those who actually affect, who are actually imposing uh, self-made uh, sanctions on elder people, I mean on older persons. So Adiz is actually uh, it's a Korean call to the outside world that those who, are, who can actually come to our aid, can come to our aid, we can, uh, can help us uh, fight this battle that we have started with the, the witch finders who are accusing elderly people wrongly to say they are the people behind all these things. So far, so good. We have reunited families. We have last week BBC was here. They interviewed me. We took them where we took them out and they saw what we are actually doing. And uh, they just left, they left yesterday. We are, they were here for two days and we explained everything to them and they filmed, they took the, 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 the narrative behind what is happening. You should be watching it in time soon as it's, as soon as it's edited. Thank you very much. I think how we're going to try and um, 
dissipate those myths around. We're going to have to set up some uh, community-based programs, also urban and rural, uh, and with a system we've got called Teachbox, which is a very simple system for delivering training in um, areas where there's no electricity and et cetera, et cetera. So in your urban communities. I'm very happy to discuss that with you outside of this meeting today. In fact, it would be great to talk to you anyhow. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm Ian Sheriff, and I keep on hearing this term, older people. Well, I'm 78. Uh, my students are quite interesting because they always remind me, and I'm sure this goes for the Irish connection as well. Uh, they say to me, I hadn't realised you were older than the NHS. And, and on that point, I normally just walk out. No, no. But uh, So I'm delighted to be here uh, to talk to you. And I think that's when I started this journey way back in early 2000. I was doing some research about timely diagnosis. And it became obvious to me, people were saying, they don't understand about dementia, they don't know what we're doing, and nobody really gives a damn about us in our communities. So let's do something about it. So what I said, we, can cha we can't change your dementia, but we can change your communities. And that was the challenge I was set. And then this guy called um, David, somebody Cameron, uh, rang us up and said, would you start leading on something around this? So I said, okay. I've had a very interesting last two or three months, because chairing two prime ministers groups, it's been very hard to catch up with who's in charge and what shall I do. Uh, I'm happy to say that the, I can't remember the one we've got now because the names just fade, but any of the one we've got now is supporting everything that I'm trying to do. So that's what I did. Now, one of the things I had to do was how do you change that? An urban uh, rural community, by the way, does anybody recognize that? Do you remember the film War Horse? But well, it's not far away from there is the field where they charge through on the horse. And that's an advert for Steven Spielberg. I get paid for saying, no, I don't. Okay. So I had to change the uh, rural communities. What is, and I'm going to keep this very short, what is the, the binding factor in all our rural communities? What's the thing? They've even made a television program about it. Do you remember the Vicar of Dibley? Right, parish councils. And do you know how many there are in England? 10,000. And so I thought, hang on, let's do something with them. So I got five of them. I said, can you work together on dementia? Now, I, sorry to parody this uh, West Country. That's where I, I'm living at the moment. Uh, and they said, oh, no, 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 we can't work with them. In 1842, they blocked our drains. So I had all of that myths and everything else to sort out. I finally got them, five of them to work together, and I'll briefly say what they've done. They now employ a dementia support worker with two other support workers. Five of them have put the money in for that. They're running groups seven days a week. As soon as you get diagnosed with dementia, the local GP refers you into this system. My dream then was, well, if I can do that with five, can I do it with 10,000? So I got a hold of a group called the National Association of Local Councils, and guess what? They said, yes. So we sent out a survey. I'm really pricey in this. You know, it took a bit longer. Uh, and we asked every t uh, town and parish council, what would they like? to become a dementia-friendly and uh, communities and also to support it. So they wanted a guide. So I sat down and wrote this guide, sent it out to them, and there it is there, very short, but it says things like, at your parish council meeting, there should be one councillor who is designated your dementia-friendly champion. That person then will make sure that your, your groups, you're coming together, and also, you've got this thing called precept. Who knows what precept means? Ah, you must live in a rural community. It's the money parish councils collect, and they can spend it on their communities. Now, that is a great big door opener for me. So I've asked them to start thinking about what they did in these five parish councils. Can they emulate that? Interestingly enough, next week, 
we're getting the survey back to see what they've done about this and how they've implemented it and how they're doing on their funding. Now, if I can get that sorted out, I've started to sort some of the rural uh, issues out for dementia. Oh, by the way, um, we got a guy called Boris, somebody to sign this thing, to send it out. And uh, that was quite an interesting meeting. I was one of those, I was invited up on a, well, during that period when perhaps people shouldn't have been meeting and sat in the garden. When it all blew up, I'm allowed to say this now because I'm 78 and I don't give a damn. Um, I was asked, did I have a drink with him? I said, yes. They went, oh, I got their pens out. I said, coffee. And that de deflated the whole thing. But it was very good. And I just, am I allowed to just deviate a bit? I said to the Prime Minister, because he... <laughs> <laughs> this is like ABA boxing, isn't it? The bell's gone, who wants a fight? Um, so I said to him, uh, well, he said to me, why is it you use music to, to engage with people with dementia? And I said, well, um, what we do there is, if I said to you, what is the music from you when you were 16, Prime Minister? And he went, oh, um, I know. It's a song by the Human League called I'm a Waitress in a Cocktail Bar. And I said, what are you doing in your spare time, mate? It's nothing to do with me. <laughs> Anyhow, so that was the introduction to that. I, I've now got to, have a, can I go on a couple of seconds more? A couple of seconds, yeah. Yeah. The other guys that I've written, because I was tasked to, by the Prime Minister to do something about the airports in the United Kingdom. So I got everybody together. I had pilots, uh, cabin crew, uh, people living with dementia, people with hidden disabilities, doctors, nurses, uh, uh, what do they call it, the people you book your holidays with. I got them all into uh, the House of Commons and I said, we've got to change things. The key element to that that we've changed is we got the CAA, the Civilian Aviation Authority. They're the people who say what happens and doesn't happen in airports and airlines. Now, and I'm abbreviating this right the way down, every airport in the United Kingdom has to reach certain standards for people with hidden disabilities. Now, I've got the scars on my back because we managed to, and, well, and that's the end of my talk. <laughs> I'm going to have to go. I'm late now. Oh, yes, of course yeah. you do. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Take care. I'll see you soon. Hey, listen, Ian, I'm happy to sit back down and we can carry on with your <laughs> wit and draconteur. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say it's wonderful to be part of working with Ian and I'm sure there's that saying that says when you get a small group of committed people together, they can change the world. Yeah. That, this man will change the world. Yeah. I'm we have been having a whole range of discussions today and one of the conversations um, that I was involved in um, was about planning. Uh, and. I, I have stood on platforms in the past in front of planners and said, it seems to me that one of the great challenges, if you are a planner, is that a job that ought to be about a visionary engagement with the future has ended up being a bureaucratic responsibility for development control. And I think that that, that thing about a visionary engagement with the future is really critical to all of this. And, and if you will allow me, very quickly, I'm going to do some audience participation. Um, partly because nearly everyone ought to be asleep by now. And if there's anyone still with us online, you can join in this too, although we won't be able to see you. I want you to put your hand up if you can say for certain where you will be living in 30 years time. Yeah, that's not difficult, is it? Uh, how many of you are living in the house that you were living in 30 years ago? So maybe about 10% of the people in this room. Uh, so my point is, when we build new places, we only ever think about the first occupants. Rather than thinking about all the people who will live there over the 30 years or 50 years or 100 years or 200 years, that those homes will be sitting there and people will be using them. And I think that we need to get that kind of sensibility into our thinking about how we plan our communities. So it's not just about taking 
a small number of isolated examples and saying, we're building this as a, as a community that cares. We need to be thinking, as we're building this new 800 home development or this new garden village that's going to have 3,000 homes, can we think about all the people who will live there forever? And that means the whole population. How do we make sure it works not just for today or for the first people who move in, but for absolutely everyone? And until we can get back to a sense that planning is profoundly a visionary engagement with the future, it will be difficult to do that. So we need to do it. Clarion needs to do it. The large scale developers who are here need to do it. What we saw in Norway is a visionary engagement with the future. That's what we need to be doing. I just heard the word from David just a, a moment ago about, about visionary engagement. That's exactly the term that I want to repeat here again. Um, this visionary engagement that we're talking about is uh, located in the urban area, of, uh, in the, right in the middle of the city of Hong Kong. Um, the interesting thing that we're trying to do it here is it is actually one of the first attempts that we do it in an existing urban area during an urban renewal process. I mean, here in Hong Kong, we call it the Urban Renewal Authority, and they are tasked with uh, a, a very difficult job of uh, renewing the urban areas in Hong Kong. Uh, as some of you might aware of the, uh, the, the middle area of the Kow Kowloon Peninsula is very aged, and they did a very quick exercise of calculating, removing all the old buildings and putting all new buildings in there, it cost them the time and the money that they can, they, one can never afford or the government can never afford. Simply the, um, the, the plot ratio that you're going to regenerate through demolishing all the buildings will be exactly the same as how much you can build. So that doesn't make sense. So the, the, the idea of this pilot project is to rehabilitate the existing urban neighborhood to try to put into a, uh, 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 an objective of changing the community to cope with the uh, aging. Uh, phenomenon of, of the uh, people, of the resident living living here. As I pointed out earlier in my presentation, we call it double aging. But on top of that, we don't really want to um, uh, put in the stigma of uh, people with dementia living in such a uh, uh, an active uh, uh, and also dynamic neighborhood. So we look at the whole district, uh, which is called Tokwa Wan, uh, right next to the old Kai Tak Airport. If any one of you has been old enough to experience flying in and out of the Kai Tak Airport, you might have uh, recollections of uh, uh, there's a little little city right next to little uh, uh, town area right next to the Kai Tak Airport. When doing this pilot project, uh, we aim at looking at uh, reju rejuvenating or rehabilitating the whole neighborhood. A number of street blocks, actually, there's about six street blocks in um, in, in in the entire district, in order to to uh, uh, rebuild a neighborhood that would be not only smart and multi-generational, but also can cope with the challenges of uh, people living with dementia in the district. So that's a very, very quick uh, 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 introduction to what I was trying to introduce to Ian when we talk about the subject. But in terms of uh, um, progress, we're just starting to engage uh, or form a consortium uh, led by the Urban Renewal Authority, uh, engaging all the stakeholders, including the contractors, the designers, uh, the district uh, uh, organizations, we call it the non-government organizations, community centers, and, and, and almost ev everyone that would that would take part or they would have a, have a stick in the uh, development of this neighborhood. So, um, uh, tender actually is being called now to to invite all parties to join this uh, wonderful pilot projects. Um, I look forward if in the future I have the opportunity to update your guys about this exciting project. Again, this is the first that we would uh, uh, embark on in the living uh, neighborhood of Hong Kong to try to change the community as uh, uh, one of the speakers said earlier, not the people, but we try to change the community to cope with this very uh, uh, unique phenomenon of double aging in Hong Kong. Thank you, Ian.